I'm Stephanie and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Let's Talk Film, a series where contemporary women get a chance to have their voices heard on the latest film releases. Today's film we'll be reviewing is written, directed, and starring Jennifer Westfield, Friends with Kids. I'm standing outside of the building where the Wix Lounge, a free work and event space for creative professionals, is located. It is situated here on West 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenues in the heart of the bustling Flatiron District. You'll find the landmark Flatiron Building, one of the oldest original skyscrapers of New York City, just around the corner as well as gorgeous Madison Square Park. And, with Union Square just a few steps away, the Wix Lounge is positioning itself as an innovative addition to this vibrant historical area. Let's go upstairs and find out a little bit more about this creative hotspot. So firstly, Ashley, thank you so much for doing this interview for Let's Talk Film. You're welcome. So I'm really new to Wix and I was really curious, so what did it start out as? Is it a graphic design firm that decided to go? Uh, so Wix started out purely as a tech startup, as an easy way to build your own website. Um, oh. So you can go on Wix and very simply and for free, you can build your own website using a really easy click and drag interface. It's almost like building a PowerPoint, it's so simple. And so the company existed just kind of as a tech company online, um, and they had an office with a few employees on the seventh floor of this building. And when this space became available, they said, how cool would it be if we created this kind of marketing space where people could come and learn about the product and interact with us and essentially be the face to the company. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, as a space, as the lounge, exist purely to promote Wix.com and support Wix users. Although that doesn't mean to work here, you don't have to be a Wix user, but we hope that people who come here will either decide to use Wix or spread the word about Wix to their friends and other people that might be looking to build a website easily. So during the day, Co-workers can come here. If you're a freelancer, an artist, an entrepreneur, you can have free space to work, free coffee, free tea, free printing, and you're surrounded by other amazing creatives. And then in the evenings, we host events for free. Um, so you apply, and if you want to have a fundraiser, a book launch, you name it, you can have it here. And then on top of that, because we're run by Wix.com and we exist to promote Wix, we also offer free one-on-one -on -one support sessions for Wix users. So. Wix users can sit down with our support manager and she'll answer any of their questions about the products or about building a website using Wix or even just giving them graphic design and web design tips as well. Oh well. And how long has this uh, been in existence? Around a year and a half now. So we're pretty new and young still. Oh wow. And um, do you have any other locations? We have one other Wix lounge in San Francisco that's pretty new, but it's more of an event space than it is a co-working space. Um, but it's a beautiful space. It's in the Mission District, and they have a small portion that's indoors, but they have a giant patio. Oh. So a lot of their events are more outside-focused and happen mostly in the summer. Okay, and can you just tell us where folks that are watching the program can get more information about Wix Lounge? Yeah, for the Wix Lounge, you can go to www.wixlounge.com, or you can go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Wix Lounge, or follow us on Twitter at Wix Lounge. And then also to find out about the websites and building your own easy-to-build site using Wix, uh, that would be Wix.com. Hey, oh, wow. Well, once again, thank you so much You're for um, taking the time to answer my question. Yeah, I'm happy to do so. Thank you. And now let's meet our panelists. To my far left, I have Jesse Blanchard. Hi. Next to her, I have Shirley Joel. And closing out our panel, we have Danielle Winston. Hello. Today's film we'll be reviewing is Friends with Kids, written, directed, and starring Jennifer Westfield. Um, did you agree with some of the stereotypes and archetypes in this film? It's a big question. Mm -hmm. That is a loaded question. <laughs> um, I wasn't, there, there was nothing about it that really stood out to me as being disagreeable. Mm -hmm. um, nothing jumped out at me about, about the stereotypes about age. Um, I mean, of course, there is the whole having kids before you get too old sort of, yeah. sort of theme, and that's probably the number one thing that stood out to me. But other than that, 
And the no. biological clock. Exactly, the biological clock. Because I must say, at one point, I totally found it to be offensive. I really did. Not personally offensive, but I felt offended for Julian. Because everyone kept just thinking she was this poor, sorrowful, pitiful person. And it's like, no, she kind of has it together, you know? But all so. through the ages, whether it was contemporary, whether it was in the my generation of getting married, there were always couples like that. Mm. There would, a guy who would help, who was willing to change a diaper, and a guy would say, ugh. I, may, I bring in the, the bread and, and you take care of, of everything else. So yeah. it's just a continuation of it. But, and they, the, uh, the hot couple, mm -hmm. that, that is more open than it was in my generation. The, oh, really? Uh, in, I mean, they were those couples. Yeah. But they, they were nowhere as open and as acceptable as it is portrayed. So that's, I think that's good. That's an evolution, and I think it's good that uh, people are freer to do that. Danielle, did you have another point um, that you wanted to make? I agree with you about the, um, the woman getting older and feeling as though she had to have a baby. It was a little offensive, and, and they kept doing it. And I felt bad for her, too, that yeah. they were just... And she did seem to have her act together, and she yeah. was doing really well. So, yeah, and they showed her boyfriend. Um, yeah. Kurt? Ed Burns, yeah, and he oh. was uh, a very present father, so they changed, they didn't, they messed with that a little bit. But he's yeah. a divorced father. Yes, mm -hmm. he is. But he was still a father. Yes, mm -hmm. but, but not in the traditional way. He could be the good father, he would, uh, you know, take care of his kids, but on the other hand, you wondered what, what was the divorce about? What precipitated that divorce? I mean, was he as good and as desirable as he appeared? Mm, well, as we see with any of the couples, everything yeah. is complex. Yeah. Yes. So. Usually in romantic comedies, there's a relationship of boy meets girl, conflict and resolve. Does this film challenge that definition of romantic comedy? I don't think so. I feel like it, I felt like it was kind of predictable in that way. There was boy already knew girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very complex conflict and resolve and happily ever after. It was mm -hmm. it was pretty predictable in that sense. Indeed. So do you think it's the happily ever after that makes the rom com? I'm sorry, that makes mm. that makes the romantic comedy, excuse me. Um, is that aspect I think so. that makes it? I think they always end in happily ever or the illusion that that might happen. Okay. Yeah, I think so, yes. It was it was a comedy basically, and uh, and there was romance there. So I guess you have to call call it a romantic comedy. Okay. Um, did you feel the story takes some predictable and easy routes? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I would say that it definitely takes yes. some predictable and easy routes. It's almost like um like you knew what to expect from the beginning. Yeah. That, exactly. That the arrangement would fall apart and that they would work it out, and in the end, whether they wound up together as a couple or together as friends. But there would be that happily ever after moment. So now, can I ask? Because I've heard this from you all, which is that you know it's you pretty much know what to expect. When you went to see this film, were you at all bored because you felt like you knew what to expect? I certainly wasn't. I I, I, did, I didn't know uh, how it would end, but I didn't see Friends with Benefits and I didn't see Bridesmaids, so I came with a pretty clean slate. Okay. Well, yeah. Jesse. I wouldn't say I was bored, but I kind of just, I, I felt all along like I kind of knew what was coming at the end. So I wasn't yeah. bored. I enjoyed all of the, all of the bumps along the way, yeah. but I knew where the, where the ride was headed. Well, I think it was very entertaining, and it was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed the movie. And I think, as you said, there are certain conventions to romantic comedies, and I think we see them all the time, and we know the couple is going to get together, and that doesn't make us bored. Yeah. For me, I definitely was so intrigued by the story, and for a minute there, I questioned whether they would or would not get together. I surely did. So I thought it did a good job, and like you, I enjoyed the bumps along the way. But yeah, that's what it's all about. So what did you think of the dialogue of this film? I thought the dialogue was very witty. It was entertaining. Um, I felt like it fit right in with, with the style of the bridesmaids and, and those other sorts of comedies, um, but it was a little bit a little bit tamed down a little bit okay. than some of the other comedies I've seen recently. But I thought it was very good. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought it was very witty, quirky, and um, not predictable or run of the mill. I, I liked it a lot. Maybe one or two things possibly at the end we might have made differently. But mm -hmm. 
I liked it. I thought it was very original. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I already expressed my opinion. I thought the dialogue tried too hard to show how contemporary and how modern uh, this couple were. I mean, they, all the words that used to be their boat are now spoken casually. Mm -hmm. So that is a revelation of a direction of, of dialogue going now in all movies that I've seen. Um, so what did you feel were the strengths and, and or weaknesses of this film? Well, I would say the weakness was its predictability. It was just too predictable. Mm. Um, and uh, some of the caricatures, I thought, were too much. But the strength was that the characters, the actors were good. It yes. was an ensemble, and, and they played off each other, I thought, pretty well. And it was an amusing story. I would say that the weaknesses were the fact that we didn't get to see the other couples enough uh, outside of Jason and Julie. Um, I would say that the, predict the predictability was definitely a weakness, but I would say that having portrayed a previously unshown, unconventional relationship, that that definitely is a strength. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably the, the best thing about this film, is seeing something that we didn't see otherwise. And it was entertaining. Predictable or not, it definitely was, was fun along the way. Yeah. I think it was, even though we knew what was going to happen, as you said, there were times that you wondered. I think the writing was very strong. The actors all were very talented, and they were fun to watch, and they all really um, embodied their characters. With the weakness was that we didn't see more of the supporting characters, I felt, mm -hmm. and I would have liked a couple of turns or twists that we yeah. didn't expect that were a little mm -hmm. edgier, mm -hmm. and that's it. Did you overall like or dislike this film? I, I, I did not care for the film, frankly. I think it overplayed the whole uh, situation uh, of um, the friends and, and the marriage. I th and I, I guess I didn't like it. I thought, I used the word caricature before. I thought it was too much of a caricature of uh, both the hot couple and uh, the um, presumably more settled married couple with, with, the, with the two kids. I just found that irritating. Um, and I just found the, the neat solution uh, at the end to pass. Uh, it just it, it just sort of irritated me. But I smiled. I yeah. laughed at it. I, you know, it wasn't a, uh, an afternoon poorly spent. Mm -hmm. But I would not have gone out of my way to see it. Okay, that's it. For what it was, I liked it, but it I felt like there's definitely more that it could have given. There could have been a lot more. So it's kind of teetering on either side for me. It just barely falls onto the I liked it side. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I liked it. I, I liked it very much, and I liked the two. I thought Adam Scott did a wonderful job, and I haven't seen him starring in a film, and Julie Westfeld, or no, that's not her name, Jennifer Westfeld. Jennifer. Yeah, I thought they, I really liked it. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, who, would you, who do you think should see this film, and who do you think will see this film? Well, I suspect that it will be the, the much sought after 19 to, uh, 18 to 49 segment that the advertisers all want. Um, That's a huge chunk of people. Now, who do you think should see this film? Nobody. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry Jesse. <laughs> um, I think that people who will see this film are probably 18 to 35, yeah. which is, uh, once again, a kind of a large, a large group of people. But I think the people who should see the film are probably uh, 25 to 35. Yeah. And female. I would oh, say. okay. Female. Yeah. yeah. Um, I agree with you. I think it, it's sort of a young audience, um, a lot of women. But then there's a lot of the Saturday Night Live cast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that will draw people who will see it as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know who should see it. Yeah. I, I, I can't even answer that. But uh, I agree yeah. with you guys. Um, if you were not on this panel, would you have seen this film? Yeah, I would have seen it. No. Okay. Probably not. I probably wouldn't have seen it. I must say probably not. Now, why wouldn't you have seen it? Um, well, let me start with Jesse and then I'll get to you. Yeah. So. Because just, just when I read the description of it, um, nothing really jumped out at me. Nothing really stood out to me as, as it being something really unconventional that 
you know, that I'd be really eager to see. And then also it wasn't playing at, a, at many, many theaters, so I probably wouldn't have gone out of my way. Just, just as a regular person who's looking through movie phone to see what's yeah. there, I probably wouldn't have gone out my way normally to see the film at very few theaters. Indeed. Yeah. Surely why? Well, because I, I don't care. Okay. I just didn't care about uh, the whole concept. Yeah, for me, I wouldn't have seen it just because of time, and I, it wasn't really well publicized. Me. So ladies, we are apparently all out of time, so I want to thank you so much for sharing your fascinating you. comments with me. Thank, thank you. you so much. You. Uh, we've been shooting today at Wicks Lounge and reviewing the film written, starring, and directorial debut of Jennifer Westfield's Friends with Kids. I want to thank Ashley for allowing us to shoot here at Wicks Lounge. This has been another episode of Let's Talk Film. For this and more, check us out at www.letstalkfilm.com, which is also available on your mobile devices. Until next time, I'm your host, Stephanie Aline. Keep watching and keep talking film.